Welcome to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. I'm Yetta Decker. And I'm Ken Decker. And we form part of the Decker team. You get to meet all, if you want to meet everybody, if you watch all the shows, you'll actually get to meet pretty much everybody on the team. Uh, so you just go back and check out the archive shows at DeckerTeam.com or CHRI.ca. And CHRI.ca is even now hosting the video version of the show. So you not only get the audio podcast, you also get the video ones if you like to watch us instead of just listen to wow, us. Wow, I didn't even know that. You didn't? No. Oh, we've been doing it for quite a while. <laughs> hmm. Guess I better get on the site and watch some of the previous shows. Well, they're on our site. You've been watching them there. I know. I know. Uh -huh. Anyway, so lots of opportunity. So today we're going to talk about your fall maintenance checklist. I can't believe. Burr. Yeah, exactly. Already. <laughs> so, Hard to believe summer's in the in well, the books. Well, it's done. Much, yeah. So here we are in the fall. Hopefully we're going to enjoy a bit of a... Um, Indian summer for a little bit longer, but let's see what happens. So anyway, exterior, that's where we would begin before it gets too chilly. Yeah, it's nice to get this stuff done before, you know, it gets really cold and we get the first snowfall or whatever, and then you go, ooh, I better put the lawn furniture away and do whatever. I think mine have been left out a few winters. And therefore, we've had to throw them out. Yes. Because they don't do very well. No, they don't Especially like Especially the cushions. We've had yeah. mice make nests and squirrels. homes and squirrels. Squirrels like the insulation out of your cushions in yeah. the wintertime because it makes a nice warm place. Yeah, it does. So anyway, so we're let's not doing to, that anymore. Let's go to the exterior. And yeah. One of the first things we think of is windows and doors. Yes. Because windows and doors can leak air. And in the wintertime, we don't want that freezing cold air coming in needlessly. Uh, so it's time to check that the seals are good on the windows, you know, that they close properly, they're not bent or crooked, so you've got gappage. Same thing with your doors, looking at your seal on the bottom, making sure the rubber's still on it. Uh, the side seal seats nice and tight. Sometimes it's even a matter of just adjusting your door connection, so, uh, you know, where the door handle latches, so that it will pull the door a little tighter because sometimes they're a little loose if you can feel it moving. Another thing to do is look for daylight. If you can see daylight coming through anywhere, then you probably got some cold air coming in. Probably do. Yeah. I know I had to get down on the ground at our front door and look underneath because part of the rubber had ripped off mm -hmm. and I wanted to see how much of it was missing. And fortunately, there was five rows of it. So the fact that one row was deteriorated didn't really matter. Um, Not very much. No. I mean, you want to look at that and see that you at least have two or three rows of the rubber like mm -hmm. a gasket or whatever you mm -hmm. call it, little, like a little mud flap, but on the bottom of a front door yes. or a back door. So you definitely want to see if those there. And it's not something you can really see from visually coming to the door. And you've already got the metal piece coming down, so yeah. it looks good. Yeah, you got to get down on the ground and look at it. Yeah. And they're fairly easy to change if you need to. Yeah, it's not a big deal. It's three screws, so I took it out. Four screws. <laughs> I took it out and, yeah, put it back on. Wow. Handy, so there you go. Handy woman. Ah, uh, there you go. Nice. And the neat thing around this fall maintenance thing is, for the most part, it is things that a homeowner can take on on, on their own. Yeah, a lot In of them. In the event that you don't want to, though, or that it's just a bit beyond whether it's your time or whether it's just your skill level, it doesn't really matter. We've got great contacts. Uh, part of our Team 100, it's actually more like a Team 250 now, where we've got associations with lots of professionals in different um, sectors that relate not just to housing, but certainly also relate to housing. Mm -hmm. So if you need a handyman, call us. We have people that specialize in fall preparation yep. and getting a house ready. So they've got a checklist and they know exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. And they'll come in and just itemize. Or if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you'll want to watch this entire show. Yeah. Uh, so on those windows, yep. uh, many of them have what we call weep holes. They're down at the, mm -hmm. near the bottom, they're little slits. And they're designed to be open. So sometimes you can just put like a paper clip in there or whatever and just make sure it's clean. Because that's where uh, any condensation or moisture that may uh, develop inside the window, inside the uh, vinyl tubing, that can weep out so you're not getting a moisture buildup inside. Uh, and then caulking. Well, just before you move to caulking, I want to say around the weep holes, there's also certain styles of windows where the panes of glass actually have weep holes or yeah. breathe holes mm -hmm. inside the sealed unit. So there are Hello two windows. different things. That's one of the brands. Yeah, don't plug those either. Don't <laughs> plug those. We have been to a house where those were plugged with cotton batten and it took somebody days 
to pull out all the little pieces of fiber that had been put in there and they just thought it was a leaky window but in fact it's the function of the window so those aren't the weep holes that ken's talking about he's talking about the ones actually in the vinyl of the window mm -hmm. two different things yes so on to caulking yes now you can so around your doors and windows and uh, transition locations, so where the brick meets up to the siding or where you get a change in, in material, generally you're going to have a, a caulking in that section. And those caulkings generally last three years or five years. And then they start cracking and if they're cracked open, moisture can get driven in there and start to do some rotting or whatever. And so you want to check the caulking around all your windows, all your doors and any transition areas. Now the other thing when we talk about weep holes is in brick, brick siding or facade will have weep holes at the bottom. Usually about every third to fifth brick the opening is open on the last row or the bottom row of bricks. Do not fill those in. We see so many houses where they've filled it in with caulking or filled it in with cement and they're really designed to let any moisture that goes through the porous brick because brick is concrete is porous any moisture that gets in behind that rolls down the the vapor shield and goes out that weep hole so make sure you leave those open and yeah, don't close them up yeah. don't don't use caulking there yeah no okay now the next part where you do want to make sure it's all sealed up and caulked is your is your shingles and there's an area where you're looking for loose or damaged shingles uh, anything that may be missing we've had some wind storms and you might have lost a, a shingle or two. So check for that. Look around where uh, vent pipes come through, where, where ducts come through for the, the venting, uh, where your, your pipe comes through for your stack, for your toilets, um, places like that, or flashing against the house. You wanna make sure that that is sealed up with a, um, a tar type of caulking to make sure we're, we're not getting any moisture in in the winter time right. or summer. <laughs> we, yeah, we want matter. them. It's a good check once a year to make sure your your roof's in good shape. Yeah, and now trees and shrubs, we mm -hmm. want to get them ready for winter too. Yeah. Now this isn't so much about pruning your shrubs. For, that's good too. For, yeah, it's good too. This is more about protecting your home, and that's cutting off any branches that might come in contact with your with your siding, with your brick or your stucco or with the roof because mm -hmm. any anything like that we get a lot of wind those things are moving back and forth and they're prematurely wearing your exterior of your house so you want to make sure none of your trees or shrubs are well touching. and if they're well and not just touching I think the other challenge that we've seen and we've experienced is when that overhangs your house so a large tree that's been delimbed up and so that it's got a nice canopy on it if that's too close to the house it could create mold and moisture and moss and that kind of stuff growing on your actual house. Yeah, if you get too much shade, yeah, not enough sun to dry it out, the, that your exterior materials never dry up. Right, so it's keeping it all trapped in there mm -hmm. and prematurely wearing yeah. out all kinds of material. And while you're at it, you might want to look for any damaged trees, any limbs that are overhanging your house that may not stay attached because the trees, you know, not the healthiest. You want to make sure those get taken off before they fall on your roof. Yeah, that's not a good thing. No. We had one go through a window. We did. Mm-hmm. That's not fun either. So number five is gutters. Yeah. So if you're creating a... Actually, we should probably put on our website this checklist. So we people could, could just that. go in and print it. We could do that. We could. And otherwise, if you're listening right now, because that checklist doesn't exist yet. I'm just thinking about it as we're talking. Uh, Certainly, writing this down in order is a great way to go through the exterior mm -hmm. and just get through it. So, yeah. gutters. Yeah, gutters are your, your eaves troughs. Uh, they're notorious for picking up leaves and, and um, you know, we used to call them the helicopters, the things that come off of the maple trees. All kinds of stuff gets stuck in there. Even the granular from the roof, mm -hmm. from the shingles, will uh, wear and fall in your gutters. And then that may eventually plug either the hole to the downspout, may plug the downspout, and that's the time to make sure that those got good flow, especially if you get a rain, go out and make sure your downspouts are flowing properly. <coughs> Excuse me. And also, make sure your downspouts are long enough and they get 
the water three to six feet away from the house. The, many times in the summer we run over them with the lawnmower and whatever and they get broken and squashed and whatever. That's the time in the fall to make sure those things are, are repaired to keep, keep that water away from the house. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite home inspectors always said, your house is not a boat. So if you want a dry basement, keep as much of the water away from the foundation as possible. And that's one of the reasons to have gutters and eaves troughing in the first place. Mm -hmm. I've seen, just, yeah, I've yeah. I'll just cut you off there, but I've seen so many damaged foundations from people that had the gutters, had the downspouts, but the extension got taken away. Yes. And so they take all the rain that's coming off the roof and putting it in like a three square foot area right at the corner of the foundation course that's undermining everything creating problems yeah definitely is. so you want to make sure that's handled so we're gonna go inside for a minute mm -hmm. and we're gonna talk about the furnace well maybe before we do that should we touch on the air conditioner on the outside yeah if it's time to shut it down uh, great to put a little uh, piece of wood over top if it's the type that's got the fan blades that face top uh, more modern air conditioners don't really design that way now they're designed to protect the fan but uh, maybe a piece of plywood over top and then a big brick or block or something to hold it down in a windstorm or you might want to tie it down with bungee cords. You just don't really want to cover the, you want circulation to be able to happen. Yeah, I don't highly recommend um, a plastic. putting like a plastic covering over it because that can retain moisture inside and could damage your unit. Um, but also... Remember, it might be a good time, too, to turn the breaker off for it if you're not going to use it anymore because there's a heating coil in there. But when you restart, you got to remember to turn your breaker on and wait a day before you start your air conditioning so right. that, that can and all warm up. Air conditioning units will actually get damaged if you use them at too low a temperature. Yes. So you don't want accidentally to flick it on to cool in the, in winter, the winter not a good and idea and run your air conditioner so turning off the breaker is a good thing to do so we're mm -hmm. inside to do that while we're there we're dealing with our furnace yeah and the furnace is something really uh you want to get a technician to do because there's all kinds of safety valves and and uh, carbon monoxide sensors all kinds of different things in it that are designed to, to protect your family and you want a real technician to look at that at the same time, they're going to lubricate, if it has lubricating parts, the fan and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh, make sure that your, your heat exchanger is working properly, that there aren't cracks in it that are causing carbon monoxide coming into your house. Um, all that sort of thing they're going to check. Now, what can you check? You can check the filter. And that's something <laughs> worth checking. <laughs> okay. You should be changing your filter regularly. And there's so many different qualities of filters, right? Mm -hmm. Different sizes and different thicknesses that will take out different size particles and keep your house cleaner. And, and yeah. some of the ones that trap smaller particles actually need cleaning a little more frequently just because they're trapping a whole lot more. Yeah, I like the ones that are like a car filter. They're, they're weaved back and forth and they catch most of it. And because they have a weave pattern, um, the dirt goes into the small part of the V and there's still air getting through the other sidewalls. So they will last typically three months for a good quality filter. Yeah, it depends on how much, on pets, yeah. how much dirt yeah, you're generating and all of that sort of stuff makes mm -hmm. the difference. And then there's also the HRV. While you're in that furnace room, if you have a heat recovery ventilator, mm -hmm. make sure it's clean, the humidifier, the dehumidifier. Just make sure all of the, your sump pump, all of those pieces are addressed at the same time. They're yeah. often located in the same area, so it's yeah. good to just make sure that they're and all... Your, your air exchanger will have a block that you can pull out, you can clean it. Some of them have washable ones. Other ones you just vacuum them. They'll have some foam pieces that you vacuum. Because what it's done is it's pulled in fresh air, but it's pulled in mosquitoes and flies and bugs and whatever, and it's kind of clogging it up. So get that vacuumed out. You might as well it do it when it's nice out still. Mm -hmm. Right, just a little easier yeah. to do all your maintenance Because your HRV there. typically runs winter time, not so much in the summer. So you're getting it prepared for that. Yeah. So if you're just joining us on the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team, it's Ken and Yetta talking about fall maintenance checklist. And we're about halfway through mm -hmm. or thereabouts. So if you want to watch the ones you haven't or listen to them, go to the first half of the show And if, you, if you're just joining us now. And otherwise, stay tuned for the second half. Yeah. So... We're going back outside, we're kind of inside, but what we want to do is we want to turn off our shutoff valves for our outside taps if we have a shutoff valve. Right. Then we want to go out, 
and remove the hoses, any diverters, anything that's attached to that, that hose bib, that, that faucet, because if water is retained in there, that will freeze in the wintertime and may pop the pipe. And if that pipe pops, now we got water coming on the inside because most of them have a valve that shuts off inside the house. So it's, uh, it's usually either 8 or 10 inch valves. And, but it can still split on the inside of your house and then you've got water leaking into your house, We've which we it. don't want. No, we definitely don't want that. So we want to make sure that's done. And of course the sprinkler, if you have a sprinkler system, you want to have that winterized and have all mm -hmm. the water blown out. And yes. a regular size compressor won't do that is my no. understanding. You need something much larger than that. You need a lot that. more volume. So we use a company. If you are a major do-it-yourselfer, you need just a really big one of them. You got to rent one of those. Yeah. It's not gonna... worth it probably to rent it. You better off to have someone else yeah, winterize probably. it for you. Yeah, now this is a place we hear a lot about smoke alarms and carbon monoxide testers. This would be a good time to check them, test them. Make sure they're functioning. Most of them have a push button test or whatever. If you haven't changed the battery in a year, now's the time to change it. The other thing that most people don't realize is those smoke detectors only have about a 10 year life. And then they'd start losing their sensitivity. The sensors get dusty and dirty and oil on them and grease from your house and whatever. And so we need to change those. And they're inexpensive. You know, there's battery operated ones. Even the ones that are connected into the house, Typically, they plug in with a, uh, a little plug, so they're very easy to change. Quarter turn, they pop off, unplug the plug, put a new one in, put it up. Now, what a lot of people do is they take that smoke detector and they throw it in the trash. Not a good idea because it's full of um, toxic materials and really should go to the hazard waste. So you need to take it to a special waste disposal for, the, for those uh, smoke detectors. Right. G F. CIs. Yes, ground fault circuit interrupters. Right. I usually drop the C and just call it GFI. But a ground fault circuit interrupter, uh, you'll find them in your bathrooms and your kitchens. Sometimes they're connected, so if you uh, break it, break the circuit in one area, you'll find that another bathroom Doesn't plug's not power, working, yeah. and you have to go and reset that one. So now's the time to test those. Press the little test button, make sure the breaker pops out, press it back in, make sure you still got power. And likewise on your outside. Mm -hmm. Because there are those Your outside as well. plugs have the ground fault circuit interrupter as well. These are really designed that if, if uh, electricity comes in contact with you heading towards ground, it, it measures a ground leak, basically voltage going to ground, and will shut it off very, very fast. And so it, you don't die. So you don't die, yeah. Right, that's the point. And there's a very small amount of amperage that will go to trip it. So it's very, very small. It's designed if you're in water that you don't get electrocuted. Yeah, so it's a good idea to make sure they're working. A lot of times we on houses when we're doing the building inspection realize that they're not functioning anymore and that's not cool. You really just want to make sure that those are in good condition. Yes. We're doing their job. Mm -hmm. Quite often they break and then the plug doesn't work. Right. And then people realize, oh, I got to replace that. But sometimes they break in the, op in the working position and they will not trip. Right. And that's more dangerous than one that doesn't have power at all. Correct. So you just <laughs> want to check on that. Yeah. Fire extinguisher. Yeah, make sure it's charged. Make sure you have one. Or a couple. Yeah. In the uh, predominant areas, probably in the garage, probably garage in the kitchen. Garage and kitchen. Yeah, or probably the near biggest. The barbecue. And maybe in the big. Yeah, <laughs> that's if you're Ken Decker. Anyway, oh. he's not that bad. Yeah, the hamburgers taste terrible after you use a fire extinguisher. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> work at all. Anyway, so you want to make sure that those are charged and working well. Mm hmm. Uh, and then here's another place that gets missed quite often is the hoses on washing machines. Now, I've gone to the wire mesh ones that. Uh, if your plastic's fatiguing, your rubber fatigues over time, it won't allow it to explode. But if you've got those old rubber type ones, if your machine's getting older or your hoses are getting older, check them. If they're starting to bulge at all, that's something you want to change right away because most people don't turn their washing machines off, the valves to them, when they're not using them. They leave them on all the time, which means you have, uh, depends on where you are, probably about 60, 65 pounds of pressure of water inside that rubber hose at all times and eventually it'll fatigue and when it splits it's usually when you're on vacation or you're at work. 
Well, or even if you're home, water. it's still, if you're not looking in your laundry room, it don't matter. It's working fast. Yeah. So you want to you want to change that yeah. uh, regularly. Make sure they're, or check them, make sure they're good. And uh, if you're going on vacation, it might be a good idea. Just turn that valve off. Yeah, it's actually nice to not winterize your house when you're on vacation, but certainly to reduce the probability of something going wrong mm -hmm. by turning things off at the source. Yeah. Less water running is a good thing. Water escape clause, now this is sort of a little diversion, um, certainly is one of those home insurance things that you want to make sure is included in your home insurance. Mm -hmm. Because water is an insidious issue in that you often don't see the damage it's doing. Yeah. It goes inside wall cavities, inside floors, inside cupboards, and it swells everything, and now you've got mold issues that potentially can happen too. So yeah. you want to be just really aware so what's that saying? A pinch of prevention, an, an ounce of prevention, prevention is worth a, a pound, pound of, of, cure. of cure. Yeah, that's the one. So all these things we're talking about are really parts of keeping your home in a great condition. It increases the value of your home, makes it more saleable in the future, and saves you money because you don't spend money for costly repairs when you're watching the little things. Because a little leak in the roof can create a big expense in drywall and that sort of thing. So. Right. And another one that we will get to in a minute is the whole idea of cleaning out screens and aerators on faucets. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a silly little thing. Yeah, it's just... And, and yet, it's just part of a... F and the reason we say fall, you can do it fall and spring. I mean, really, you're going to do a lot of these things both times of year. Yeah. But it's just false, so I thought it'd be a good reminder. Yes, it is. <laughs> so the, the screens and aerators, it's not going to affect the value of your house or anything. It just makes the water come out cleaner. If you take, you just unscrew them off the top of the faucet, um, they're basically a screen that makes the water come out nicely. What you'll find is that over time they may pick up some iron, some debris, some of the pipes or whatever, Even a little hard bit of water. dirt, a little bit of hard water. You can clean those out, maybe soak them in CLR and then put them back in, you're, you'll have better pressure, better flow, more even flow out of your tap, yeah. that's all. Yeah. Now, this one is a huge deal. Toilets, sinks, showers, dishwashers, all that kind, anything again, mm -hmm. we're back to the water conversation. Because they're toilet seals, those mm -hmm. little wax seals, they need to be replaced every so often. Yeah, especially if your toilet's rocking. So just kind of hug your toilet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible thing to say, but hug your toilet, give it a little, a little dance, and see if it wiggles. If it wiggles, it means your bolts aren't tight enough or you're, you're, you've got a little bit of play there. And you can look around the toilet and you can see scenes of weeping. If you've got a little bit of discolored grout around it or a little bit of moisture around it, that means we've got to take our toilet off and change that seal. And the seals, you can get the cheap ones for like $2 and you can get the expensive ones with the rubber with an extra ring on them. Uh, for like five, six dollars. I always go for the expensive one. Yes. If I'm taking a toilet off, most of my time and effort is in taking the water out of it, removing it. So I want to use the best seal I can buy. Well, and it'll last longer. Yeah, just drop that in there, put your toilet back on, you've solved a major issue because that floor can rot over time if you let that moisture keep coming out of there. Uh, same thing with showers. So many houses we go into have rotted areas along the side because their shower door doesn't quite shut right or the slope slightly off and so when the water gets past the shower curtain instead of running back into the tub it runs onto the floor so just watch Even those areas from grandchildren or children mm -hmm. i'm amazed at <laughs> just even the yeah it's amazing so just watch for those yeah. signs of leakages uh, same thing around uh, dishwashers make sure the floor is dry around your sinks under your sinks just watch, because if you start to get a slow leak, it'll rot your cabinet, it'll rot the floor below it, and, and you might not even notice. You, it's easy not to see that stuff, so just mm -hmm. be aware of those things as well. And then the other, which is an interesting one, because we've seen them explode mm -hmm. when they get too old, and that's the hot water tank. Yeah, hot water <laughs> tanks typically have an 8 to 12 year lifespan. Yeah, maybe 15, but it depends, right? Mm -hmm. So it might be a good idea to take a, take a look at that. Check the age on it. If it's a gas, it probably has a pipe fitter pipe of when the gas pipe was hooked up to it, a date on it. If it's a rental unit, usually they'll put a date on that it was installed. And most rental companies, if it's getting up there in age, uh, have them come out to service it or to replace it because many of them will replace it 
at no charge because it's it's lived yeah. its yeah, life it expectancy. Yeah, it's the life expectancy. Yeah, and it's way better to change it a year or two early than to have the side split out and you have water all over your basement. Right, and if you're owning your hot water tank, well, then you just want to be on top of it and replace it probably at the 10, 12-year mark. Well, observing it and watching what it's doing. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so now... Um, Plan your winter upgrade pro projects. This is the time you've gone around the whole house, you've been checking everything. You might say, you know what? This bathroom needs updating, or this carpet's really getting worn, or it's a trip hazard now, or my dog chewed the corner, or my cat dug up the corner of the carpet, or whatever. And maybe it's time to do some upgrades. This is a great time to plan out with your, with your spouse or significant other and say, hey, would this, is this the winter that we're going to change these cabinets or we're going to upgrade from uh, Arbright to Granite or whatever. And just plan what you're going to do for the winter because we're going to be inside for quite a few months. Great time to, to make the inside really nice. Yeah, and if you want a great home that has been beautifully maintained, we have quite a few of them. And in particular, you've got a couple I'm thinking of in Manatic mm -hmm. that are in great condition, one under $600,000 and one just around just over $700,000, both beautiful homes, and one just under a million dollars. A third one that's quite stunning. So beautiful Manatic properties as well as some others that you'll just have to call us on because they're just coming onto the market now as well as a beautiful bungalow at about the 650 mark in Manatic. So we've got some beautiful Manatic properties that have all been beautifully maintained. They've gone through this checklist and done those things in the home and you'd feel really proud to call them home. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to, to talk to us about any issues you're having with your home or you want to find a new home, or you want to get rid of the one you're in, we'd love to help you. Give us a call at 613-860-4663. That number again is 613-860-4663. And thanks for joining us. And if you want a list of a handyman or somebody to help you get this work done, call us as well or just connect with us on the web at info at deckerteam.com. That's Decker with no C's and two K's. Have a great day. Bye. Just